Now, the Russian government is moving to ban all wings of the Lebanese group Hezbollah for being what it describes a terrorist organization. The UK's Home Secretary has accused it of trying to destabilize the Middle East. Britain's already blacklisted Hezbollah's external security unit and its military wing, but now wants to outlaw its political arm too. The new ban will come into force on Friday if approved by Parliament. Let's go now to Andreas Creek, who's an assistant professor at the Defence Studies Department at King's College London, and he's joining us live from London. Uh, Mr Creek, always good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. Why is the British government trying to take the step now? Oh, yeah. Hi. I think it's uh, to do a lot with pressure coming from Washington, uh, realignment with British policies and the UK, uh, the US is more um, countering and more aggressive uh, move and policies towards containing Iran in the region. Uh, I think it has to seen, be seen within that light. But the debate has been going on for a long time in the UK and across the Western world of how we, what we're going to do with Hezbollah. And I think now they've taken the step of saying we're going to classify the entire organization, political and military, as a terrorist organization, which I don't think is always a very productive way forward. And will it get approval from the British Parliament, do you think? Um, I think it's, it's, it's a contested subject. I mean, if you look at uh, Corbyn, for example, the uh, opposition leader and many members of the Labour Party, they take a more nuanced approach, as many academics do, um, because, you know, it, it causes some of, uh, some of the issues. I mean, you're, you're a bit between a rock and a hard place here, because on the one hand, uh, Hezbollah is a destabilizing factor in the region when you look at how they're exporting uh, their operations across Syria, Iraq, and potentially also Yemen, and uh, not, obviously Lebanon as well. Um, but on the other hand, it is, um, it is also a social political uh -huh. player in Lebanon that is part of the government, um, that obviously if you were trying to target just uh, the uh, the military wing, you will not be able to, uh, to to affect their political wing. And if it comes to countering finances, the issue with Hezbollah is obviously that it has so many multiple streams of income that if you sanction it in the West and you make sure that Western uh, uh, Western money doesn't go or country from Western countries into, to Hezbollah in Lebanon, it doesn't necessarily undermine the financial situation of the organization because it is a hybrid organization that, as a social political actor, is controlling territory, controlling people, controlling yeah. infrastructure, is almost a state within the state that can raise money. And, and on the other hand, obviously, it has Iran as a, as a massive yeah. backer. So it is a difficult situation to, to deal with. And some would even say controlling the government. I mean, given everything you've said, how workable would this British ban be? What would it mean for Britain's relationship with Lebanon, given Hezbollah has 13 MPs in the Lebanese parliament. It's a key mm. player. I think it's highly counterproductive because here's the thing. As I said, financially, you will not have a massive impact on Hezbollah's operation because they have alternative streams of income. If you want to work with the organization, and I think this is the reason why the UK government in the past has taken a nuanced approach of saying, well, it is a hybrid organization, but we're only having a problem with the military wing, but we continue engaging with the political one. It gave the, the, a lot of wiggle room and rooming, a room for maneuver for the British government to actually deal with a social political player, which is part of uh, the Lebanese government. Now, doing this and, and framing this entire, uh, designating this entire organization as a terrorist organization means that you have no wiggle room, no room to maneuver in actually engaging with Hezbollah, which is a very important player. And you have only coercion and only, uh, um, you know, uh, hawkish approaches to the organization, which I think in the long run will be counterproductive because Hezbollah is where they are. They are where they are. Um, they are deeply embedded in the social fabric of Lebanon as well. And I think that you're taking away some of the levers of power that you could have used in the past by merely saying we're only we're no longer dealing with it we're we're taking a coercive stand here and I think that is something particular when you see that the EU hasn't taken that approach yet and I think that's what Parliament will have to consider as well the EU has taken a nuanced approach as well saying there is a military and a political wing um, and Britain is now basically saying we're no longer uh, going with that designation um, and saying we're, we're having our own approach and I think that will hamper how uh, British government will engage in Lebanon Mr. Creek, thank you as always for your time and your expertise. That is Andreas Creek live in London. Thank you.